Hi guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Oh my gosh, what is the tea? What is the Darjeeling? The Lapsang Sushan? The Scalding Hot Assam? What is the tea? Well, I'll tell you what the tea is. Today, the tea, today, 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 the tea is scalding hot. It's so piping hot, you'll be scalded to death and you'll never recover. This is... Probably one of the most requested video topics that I discuss in <laughs> my, I think my actual entire re like history of YouTube. And that is to do an update on my stalker situation. Has it finished? What is, you know, what happened? What happened after my video I made two years ago? I'm going to tell you that the title isn't clickbait. Nothing I say in this is clickbait. I'm just going to tell you everything that happened. And it definitely didn't go how I was expecting. And it's a lot. So buckle up get a drink, get a nice little snack. We're gonna have a little chat today. I do recommend watching the first video if you haven't seen it already. For some reason, I don't know why YouTube's decided this, but it's decided to suddenly push out my stalker video, my original one I made two years ago. It's got like, it's had like 40,000 views, extra views in the past couple of weeks. I don't know why YouTube suddenly decided to do it. And I've had loads of new comments and things. So a lot of new people are now finding the video and wanting updates and everything. So I thought, you know what? Let's do that today. So I wanna say a few things before we get started because I think they're important. Now, this first thing might not necessarily make sense right away, but you'll understand why as the video goes on. But what I'm doing is not illegal. Doing this and doing this video is not illegal. I am a victim of a crime that was committed against me and I am well within my rights to discuss the situation that has happened to me. This isn't private information. I'm not giving out addresses, names or anything of the sort. You are totally anonymous in this video and you were in the first video. I had many people, police officers even tell me that my first video was not illegal. As a victim, I will not be silenced and this is not illegal. Second thing, if you do happen to know this person, I know a lot of you probably don't now because it has been a few years, but for the few who may know this person, because I know that she made herself very public back in the day, do not in any way, shape or form contact her. Do not try to find this person. If I have an, any, at a slightest, even the tiniest inkling that you, someone has tried to contact her, you'll be instantly blocked and I will never invite you, expelled from the community here on my channel. That is not what this is about. This is merely about discussing a situation that happened to me and I do not need anyone to fight my battles for me. I do not need anyone to try to be like the savior. I do not need that. I'm a fully grown adult and I can handle this stuff myself. So if I have even the tiniest hint that anyone has tried to contact her or find who she is, you will be instantly blocked and expelled from the community. I just wanted to make that very clear. With all that being said, let's get into it. So a quick recap for everyone to refresh people's memories who may not necessarily remember. So back in 2019, I had a new subscriber join the fandom. And at the start, uh, it was, you know, very, very fine. Everything that she was saying was kind of like everyone else. I barely even noticed her to begin with because she was saying very, very similar things to like the majority of people. So it was, she nothing she was doing was like standing out. Over time, got more and more intense, started to say that she loved me, became very, very attached. It was, it was a perfect example of a parent, uh, paranormal, a parasocial relationship. <clears throat> she managed to convince herself that I loved her, that we were kind of in a relationship, that she could change me. She got my name tattooed on her arm. You know, had photos of me all over her wall. She became like, if you ever watched Hey Arnold and Helga and her obsession with Arnold, that essentially was what happened to me. She became very, very attached, was messaging everyone and everything I could possibly imagine trying to get my attention. Started to eventually get aggressive towards me and everyone else because I wasn't giving her the attention she desired. It became very threatening. She was then messaging friends and family trying to find out information about me. She found out where I lived. She was going through family members like Insta, Facebooks, everything, trying to find information about me. She found out like my dad's name and like where my dad was buried and like was seeing photos of like his grave and things and where my grandparents were buried. So I'm bastardizing a story that was a 45 minute video. So as I said, if you've not watched that video, please go and watch that video. But essentially what you need to know is I had a fan who took things way too far, became way too comfortable and convinced herself that she she was a huge part of my life, when in reality, I didn't know her. I didn't know what she looked like. I didn't know what she sounded like. I didn't know who she was. For all I know, it could have been a, some 
50 year old man i don't know genuinely had no idea now with all that being said let's get on to the aftermath of the video and what happened instantly after it went live now i made the original video to hopefully like scare her off i've already been through the police system with my mum. My mum was an incredibly abusive mother. We had a horrific time growing up as a children and a lot of the things that we went through was dealing with the police and I already knew how difficult getting the police involved with a lot of stuff and how long and arduous these processes were. And I also knew from friends who have gone through not exactly intense as me, but other situations where they've had to get authorities involved. I already knew the di how difficult it is to get police to kind of understand what's going on. Unfortunately, the law doesn't really match up with social media at the moment. And it takes a, it, it's kind of a bit behind. It's not caught up to date with like the way social media is now. I already knew that there was gonna be like a long arduous process. So for me, I made a video and hoped that it would scare her off so I wouldn't have to go above that and actually get some kind of like law involved because I, I just didn't want the drama. I didn't have time. It would have been very stressful. And with my like previous history with the police with my mum, it was also quite traumatic to think about that. So I made the video in hopes that it would like scare her off. So maybe that was ignorance on my part. I don't know. Immediately after my video went live, of course she had a meltdown. Now I didn't um, engage with her like that. I, I even before my video, I can't remember the last time that I actually spoke to her. Now it's been you know it's been a few years now, but I still hadn't engaged with her. So after my video went live, it was like proper cold turkey. That was the last even tiny bit of acknowledgement from me was that video. But even before that, I hadn't spoken to her in a long time. One of the first things that happened after the video was she started um, frantically messaging me. Now, I'm not going to read through all the messages and stuff just because I can't be bothered. Like, I don't want to have to relive all that stuff. But she basically was messaging me on every single platform as, as she did in the first one, essentially telling me that I was lying and it was awful and that she was going to get me and all this stuff. You know, and she was saying this to other one of some of her followers. I'll tell you one thing. If I get any shit after this then he's gonna wish he never effing met me threatening me but one thing that she started to do was she started to message my friends i at the time didn't really tell that many people about around me except for my sort of like immediate friendship group and some family members what was going on like a lot of it it was kind of like unless you're sort of part of my immediate circle you didn't know so when my video went live that was the first time kind of talking about this almost immediately i can't again it's been a while now so i can't remember the exact time but she started like messaging all of my friends essentially saying you may have seen this video that this person's made about you made about me but they're lying they're not telling the truth you would hate them if you knew the real them i know the real truth don't believe them and she started to try to get all of my friends to like turn against me obviously none of it worked what was really upsetting and embarrassing about it was she wasn't just messaging like immediate like my immediate circle she started messaging like people in my sort of like outsider friendship group so not people who were like in my immediate like best friend list like Cam and Luxaria she was also messaging like people I've not talk to in a long time one of the people that she even messaged was a school friend of mine that i went to high school with that i've not shown on the internet for like seven years it wasn't even just my immediate circle it was people from my past who i've shown on the internet even for a, a small moment so i got messages from people who i haven't spoke to in years being like who is this person? Like, really weird. So this was actually really embarrassing. And I had to message... I, me I think I messaged about 30 people. It was about 30 people that I had put on the internet over the past, like, you know, at that point, what, 13 years of doing content back then. So, of course, I've been involved with many different people over the years. And I had to message basically all of them to just say, I'm really sorry. I'm having a situation. This woman might try to contact you. I do apologize. I know this is weird and out of the blue. And like many people messaged me being like, I'll look out for this. I'm sorry this is going on. And then I had people saying like, oh, I actually did get a message, but I kind of just ignored it. Most of these people didn't know anything was going on. Was just like, who is this weird person messaging me? That was really embarrassing. That was really embarrassing for me. What happened next was something that I really was not expecting. It was about seven weeks later. I want to say it was about seven. It's half for me to remember the exact time frame, but it was, it was, it was almost two months later. 
Twitter. I received an email. At first, I thought this was a joke. I thought it was like a scam. Like maybe it was some sort of scam or maybe this was like another account that they had created because the title, I can't remember, it was something like malicious communication charge or something. I can't remember what the title was now. I'm not going to read these emails like word for word. I'm just going to kind of paraphrase because I actually don't want her to know what was said to me, but I also don't want to read out police emails. I got this email saying that this person had gone to the police where they lived and said that I had made a video about her on the internet and it was including messages and that I was causing her to get like a barragement of hate from my followers and that I directed my people to go and attack her. And I, at the time, I didn't really know what to think. And essentially it said that she wasn't going to press charges against me. She just wanted me to delete the video. And it said that if I didn't delete the video, she would then pursue further action against me. I was completely flabbergasted that the nerve that she had, the balls, I really, the balls that she had to actually go to the police and say that I was the one in the wrong here, even though she did everything she did. And I was like, I can't believe that she is trying to have me arrested and charged, or she was threatening that she was gonna charge me for all of this situation. It was, I was so shocked. I do not know what she said to the police. Obviously, they're not gonna tell me that's confidential. And I don't know. I don't know exactly what she said to the police, but it's very evident that she clearly didn't tell the whole story from what was told to me from further down the line and from the police officer that originally contacted me from her side now this is allegedly this is completely speculation i cannot prove what i'm about to say but she must have gone in and said this youtuber has a big following has created this fake video about me talking lies sharing private information, making his fans come and attack me and kind of really embellished what actually happened and didn't tell them the full context of why that video was made and everything that she had done leading up to that. She obviously didn't tell them all this because if she did, there would have been no way in hell that I would have been contacted by the police to begin with. There definitely would have been a Maybe you should keep your mouth quiet, but clearly you've been in the wrong. Because of course I wasn't expecting the police to suddenly sit down and go through like, you know, mountains of information and watch all this stuff for just this one thing. That's why, like, if 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 she wanted to go further and press charges and everything, obviously they would have had to look at look at it all. And it would have taken no, like any no one with an ounce of sense would have been able to watch any of that and look through that and gone. Oh, she's in the right and he's in the wrong. Clearly, anyone would have with a brain would have been able to see the whole situation. So one of the things obviously she said that was like that I was sending my fans to go and attack her and that my people were attacking her. But what she clearly didn't tell the police was she was having fights with all of these people way before my video went up. I, I did talk about this in the first video, so I'm not going to go over it too much, but she was already fighting with loads and loads of people within my audience before my video, and it had nothing to do with my video and had nothing to do with me. But because she would get so jealous over everyone else, she was making herself so public in all of my live streams, Twitter, everything, comment sections, exposing herself because she would have meltdowns in like live chats and stuff. People were fighting with her on her own doing, had nothing to do with me. But clearly she didn't tell this to the police. She didn't say that she was wishing Katie, for example, one of my audience members who I spoke about in the first one, to fall over and break her face on the floor when she meets me. She clearly didn't tell the police this. That was before my video. So to say that my video made her get hate, it's like, well, no, you, you actually wished quite harm on one of my viewers before my video. Like, that had nothing to do with me. After I kind of like calmed down and digested everything, I knew what she was doing. It was so evident that because up until this point, I had completely blacklisted her. So I hadn't engaged with her. I hadn't spoke to her. I hadn't done anything for a long time. And of course, even though she was having meltdowns, I wasn't engaging. I wasn't ri rising to it. Like, I was just, she was completely gone from my YouTube life. This is the only way that she knew for sure that I would have to engage with her and have to give her acknowledgement because I can't ignore the police. Obviously, I can't ignore the police. And I know this for a fact. Now, I will get into this a little bit more, but throughout the process with the police, she kept shooting herself in the foot because 
she couldn't shut up. She sent me this email and I received like loads. This is just the one I'm going to use for this, but it says, hi, baby. Did you read my emails? Please talk to me. I want a chance to explain myself. Life is too short to hate me. I want to be your friend. If you talk to me and sort things out, I'll tell the police to close the case, which completely just proves that you were only doing this for my attention. It had nothing to do with anything you told the police. It was just to get my attention. Like it just proves everything I said. Like if you hate me this much that you're willing to go to the police, how can you honestly go, please talk to me. I want a chance to split. Life is too short to hate me. I want to be your friend. You were clearly just trying to blackmail me, you know, bribe me, whatever you want to say to talking to you to give you attention. You were threatening violence against me to get my attention. Like, all of this was purely for attention. Bear in mind as well that I frequently have people do my emails for me. I'm dyslexic, so I find it really difficult. So like they saw this message and was like, why have you got this email through? Obviously they knew about the situation. I had to tell them obviously, but like, like it's involving even other people like work people that I've, that I've hired to do emails for me. It was affecting my career. Like it was affecting my career at this point. This was like her, her last hurrah to get my attention. And the fact that you would say, if I will talk to you, you will drop the charges against me. Just, it just proves everything, everything I knew to be right. What followed after was, so I emailed this police officer back and tried to give them some context to everything what was going on. And um, I, the next day, I was advised to go to the police in my district. Went to the police station the next day and asked to speak to an officer. Gave them like a whole description as to kind of like what happened because it, it, the thing is, it was a very, because again, because this is quite a big topic and it, it's really difficult to kind of um, get people to necessarily understand directly instantly without giving some context. It was a long process of trying to like discuss the police to actually to get them to understand what the situation was. I got an interview. It lasted, it was, took about, I'll say maybe like a week. I think maybe it took like a week to get everything done. I was advised to monitor what she was doing and saying about me. Anything she says, any, any, contact that she tries to do, screenshot everything, send it to the police, just like keep them updated on everything that was going on and they would take it from there. I feel very lucky that I was able to get people who took this seriously because I really, for a while I was like, God, they're just gonna be like, this is some silly internet drama. Throughout this time, even after going to the police about me, she of course kept tweeting about how much she loved me and how much she misses me and how much she wants me back in her life. And all oh, this is public. This was all public tweets, by the way, as well. Like she was still messaging me on things. I kind of was just, I was basically just kind of ignoring and just blocking and deleting and moving on and things. And of course, screenshotting and then sending them to the police and stuff. But like, I wasn't engaging again. I want to make something very clear that I, have not spoken directly to her or a, like about her since my video went live. My video going live back in 2021, when it happened in, I think it was August, 2021. That was the last time that I like engaged. And like throughout this entire process, I didn't speak about her. I didn't talk about her. I didn't message her. I didn't do anything. But she, of course, kept shooting herself on the foot. But then flipping between aggression and anger and I hate you, you're disgusting, and calling me all these names under the sun. And you know, this was from November of 2021. I made a fake account to mess with Broly and he somehow found out and it was me and blocked me. You know, it's things like this. And uh, you should have seen the email I sent him. I don't like losing. And, you know, some of the emails that she was sending was awful about me threatening me and stuff. And like, again, this is after you've gone to the police and said that I was harassing you. And like, you're now just admitting to making fake accounts to f with me in my life. Like, and again, this is a public tweet that everyone can see. Everyone can see this. This isn't a DM, or this is a public tweet. You're a disgusting, spiteful, selfish, self-centered, attention-seeking, victim-playing, vindictive, nasty, egocentric, jealous, immature, untalented, unprofessional, insecure, little man who does not deserve a place on social media. I hope karma Fs you up royally. And this was tweeted in December of 2021. I wonder what uh, Roland Gash's dad would think of him behaving this way towards a young woman with a child. It's a shame he didn't live long enough to teach you how to be a man may he rest in peace and what does your mum think if she even cares i might go tell her what you did and she was using really like 
fully like family emotional abusive like attacks against me again this is after this is this is in january of 2022 like this is after she had gone to the police this is after you know she had said i've done all this stuff about her this is after like this is public this is public twitter using very manipulative emotional like abusive stuff against me to try to get a reaction to try to insult me to try to get into my psyche and like you can only take so much and of course the police were telling me to try to monitor to what she was saying. So I had to look at this, unfortunately. But like, I'm tagged in this as well. So like me just scrolling through my notifications, like I'm going to see it. She, of course, was still creating multiple accounts to get me. But obviously, of course, I was blocking accounts that she was making, but it was still impossible to miss everything. You know, tweeting things like this. Like, there's this like image of someone with a notepad saying people I want to punch in the face. I know a couple of people, Roly and Gasha being one of them, you know, threatening violence against me, but also trying to get her followers that she had to also turn against me and hate me. She had multiple discussions with one of her friends, followers, I don't know, saying that she wanted to come to London, come and smash me in the face, come and beat me up. She wanted to come to the Excel Center where one of my YouTube gatherings were happening, saying that like she wanted to come and thump me. She was trying to get this person to also come to the Excel, saying, are you in London? Come to the Excel and hit me. You're in London. Go to the Excel and hit Roly for me asking one of her followers to come and attack me at my event, which of course made me very nervous. You know, she also said this, oh, lol, I want to go to Social in the City. It's a YouTube convention so I can hit someone, you know, threatening violence against me. And then I wanted to knock him out like afterwards, you know, any, any, anything to go to Sitsi to see someone so I can hit him. Like constantly saying that she was going to come to my event and like attack me. And so I had to contact um, the runner of somewhere in the city which is like the youtube gathering here in london in the uk it doesn't really happen anymore but I had to contact him and be like look i'm coming to this event this is the situation again this is really embarrassing like affecting my actual job that i had to go and contact a, you know an event organizer to be like i'm really sorry like i might need some like guard i might need help because i really want to come to this event still like i'm not going to let someone stop me from doing my main job that earns me money but this is the situation that's going on. One thing that was really annoying, as I mentioned before, about how she was messaging other people and saying, trying to get them to turn against me. At, around about this time, it was like, I can't remember the exact date, but it was like late 2020 to early 2022. Me and Luxaria had both made some new friends uh, in England and they're called Novimpia. They're a drag queen couple. Uh, they make really funny videos of, you know, I absolutely love and adore them. And we, we had made friends with them recently at the time and we went to go and stay with them. And of course I had messaged the, like post them on the internet and been like, look, we're coming to see our new friends. We're all YouTubers. Of course, we're going to promote each other on social media and things. And of course I hadn't told them about the situation because why would I? I'm not going to meet every new person I meet and be like, oh, just say no, blah, blah. It was about an hour after leaving their house. It was about an hour after leaving their house. Both of them messaged me and said, just so you know, this random woman has messaged us saying all this stuff about you. Of course, we're not engaging with it, but we're just going to screenshot and send it to them. And so I was like, great. So now... Even when I show someone new online, I now have to worry that they might get messaged by her. So every time I had someone for the, for the, like, even my tattoo art. So I, I started getting tattooed in early 2022 and my tattoo artist Hiro, who does my arms i just met him new person obviously i don't know him like at the time like now we're good friends but at the time obviously i didn't know him had my tattoo done of course again as a social media person i promote the tattoo studio i promoted him i was like really lovely first tattoo session with Hiro, wonderful and of course we've become good friends now but again at the time he was essentially a stranger the next session that i went to see him one of the first things he says to me was one of your fans is quite intense isn't it and i was like my heart like sank and i was just like oh, i instantly knew what he was gonna say and i just and at, at this point i was like he's not gonna want to tattoo me anymore he's gonna be like look i'm sorry you're coming with too much baggage i had to tell him the whole story which was utterly mortifying that i had to tell this complete stranger at this point still like i'd only met him once before like he's still a stranger at the time I had to explain to him the whole situation wishing in the back of my mind that he doesn't now go 
I'm really sorry. Like, I don't need this drama. Like, he has a family. He has a wife. He has a child. Like, he doesn't want this drama in his life. And so I was like, please, please. In the back of my mind, I was like, please don't suddenly go, you don't want to work with me anymore because you're such a good artist. Luckily, he was incredibly understanding. He blocked her. He stopped, you know, he didn't interact with her and everything. He just sent me everything that she sent. Luckily, she hadn't said anything too, like, intense. But it was enough for him to notice this new person being quite intense with him. It was actually really upsetting and I I was just like, I can't believe I'm having to deal with this still. Like at this point, it'd been what? Four or five months since my video went live. And I was like, why have you not taken the hint? And now doing all the stuff that she was trying to get charges against me, but she's now, she's doing it even after. This went on for a long time. I also received an email from her with screenshots of a conversation that she had been having with someone. This really took me back a lot. Essentially, the email was something like, I'm going to make my own drama video about you. And it was like, I've been discussing you with someone else who's told me lots of things about your past. And if people knew the real you, just be warned, if you don't take your video down, I'm going to do this against you. And she had sent me screenshots of a conversation that she had been having with someone. And at the time, I didn't know who it was. One of the people I'm not going to mention, just because I, I, this person actually doesn't know anything about me. So the fact that he was slagging me off, I don't care. Like, I do not know this person so completely irrelevant. But the other person that they were talking about me to was my old housemate. And it, you know, we've discussed my old housemate, one of my old housemates here on my channel. We did a Housemates from Hell video of me and Luxair on the podcast episode. We've discussed the situation with him. He is someone that used to be one of my really good friends who did some horrible things and we fell out. We're no longer friends. We haven't been friends for a long time, but we had a lot of mutual friends who stayed kind of mutual, I guess, between us. My friend who is mutual between us then spoke to my old housemate and said, look, this is the situation. If this woman tries to talk to you, please don't engage with her. I know you and Roly have your differences, but this, just so you know, this woman is bonkers. So he was fully aware of the situation before talking to her, but I found out that he had been discussing me with her, essentially siding with her and saying that I was choosing her to be the next victim, that I was, you know, this is a common habit that I have with people and just saying all this really, I'm not going to read you the screenshots, but I don't know why she sent me screenshots because of course, then the two people who was involved in this was suddenly then exposed, who then were like, what the f were you doing telling him that we had spoken to you? Like, I'm glad that she did because I was able to like know these two people for who they are even more. I was fully gagged. I was fully shocked that they had discussed me with her to the stage that even like some of the mutual people between us was like, even that's like, no, I'm not talking to you anymore. Like, and fully was on my side. And so of course I had, you know, all the stuff I was then sending to the police as well. I was like, look, she's now threatening me with, she's discussing personal information about me with old people in my life. The level that she was going to to find information about me was deranged. Like messaging people that I had not shown again on the internet for years and years and years. And now the fact that I was in a situation where I had to tell new people in my life who I might put on the internet, like just so you know, like tattoo artists and things. Like I can't believe I had to message my tattoo artist and talk to him and be like, look, please look out for this woman because she is a, a stalker. I'm now having a police investigation against her. When I started working on the guy with my leg, one of the first things I said to him, I was like, I'm really sorry. Just so you know, this is currently going on in my life. I'm now having this rain cloud above my head that anyone that I show on the internet or anyone that I involve with myself, that this might happen. It got to a stage that we were able to evolve and uh, raise up my uh, my my charge against her was able to get even stronger because she wouldn't shut up. So I'm torn between I miss him, but I want to smash his face in. If he wants attention that badly, maybe I will give his address out. He can have all the attention he wants then. And this is one of the main tweets that she did that really got her in trouble. Um, this is one of the ones that the police really highlighted because not only is she threatening violence against me, she's also threatening to dox me because she knew where I lived. And so this is one of the ones that mainly got her in trouble trouble as well. This is like a clear threat to my safety and then saying she's going to give my address out to people, which of course being an online figure is really dangerous. Like doxing is so dangerous. So the fact that she had said this, it was like one of the worst things you could do. And again, this is the thing, like you're saying this and then going to the police saying that I'm harassing you.
in my first video, I mentioned about how I had moved house. And of course, when we moved to this place that we live now, I didn't show anything where I lived. I didn't, you know, I didn't show like majorly much of the outside. I never showed like outside of my windows. Anything I showed was inside. So like, unless you have like a deep understanding of like, London, I guess. You just, it would have been so difficult to actually work out where I lived. We were so careful what we were showing on the internet at this point because of all the stuff that had happened that like, I was so like, we can't show anything. Like anyone who came to my house, I was always like, if you come to my house, it's fine. You can take photos, but you cannot show this. You can't show this. You can't show this. You can't show this. Again, this is also in December. She tweeted out, oh, I'd love to live here and showed an image of like my house, which of course was very scary. And again, I want to say as well, this is public tweets like this is public stuff and this is public to people who she's already wished harm on me and wanted them to come and ass assault me so like as well, also as well being a public figure i have many people on the internet who don't like me obviously just being an out gay person causes enough people to be angry at you this is inciting violence against a minority like this is serious she also weirdly posted so in 2016 i cracked my head open long story i can't wait to get into it and i uh my friend at the time he had posted this photo of me i was fine with it by the way uh paul really before you ask i didn't do it like she went back to 2016 so this is like last year went back to 2016 to find a photo of me like this and to post it. And she was replying to people like making jokes about like, oh, it wasn't me who did it, lol. Like as if like she was trying to imply that she like she wants me to get hurt. Do you live by where I live? And the person just replied saying no. And they replied saying, ah, oh, never mind. Just wanted to pop in on an old friend slash enemy. She also had her accounts banned multiple times on Twitter because she was saying transphobic things towards Luxaria. She was also making xenophobic and racist remarks towards followers of mine, calling them M-O-N-G. I'm not gonna say it, uh, but it's like an old racial slur, um, but calling them M-O-N-G, oh, absolute M-O-N-G-S and all that stuff. Uh, she she was saying really horrific things to one of my one of my followers who is from Poland, making you know bigoted and xenophobic remarks against them. She had her accounts banned multiple times throughout this process. Again, I was screenshotting everything and sending it to the police. I went back and forward with the police for quite a while. It was about I, again, I don't remember the exact time frame because it was a little while ago now, but it was I would say it was about four months. It was about four months of this, like, waiting for a charge to be collected, um, waiting for, you know, the prosecution to make a case and everything, and understanding, like, what could potentially happen throughout this process. Um, it took about four months. So it was quite intense having to deal with this for four months before she officially got arrested. So she was arrested, I want to say, it was like early 2022. I don't remember the exact date, but it happened early 2022. She was arrested, taken into custody. I don't know what the original charge was. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was um, like stalking. Eventually, because of all the stuff she was saying on the internet, it was elevated to stalking with intent to cause harm because of course she said that she wanted to come and smash my face in and all that stuff. So because she kept shooting herself in the foot and saying it was quite aggressive things, the charge was able to be elevated, I guess, into a stronger charge against her. So she was arrested, questioned. I of course talked to the police. Again, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you anything about that situation. She was questioned. She was released on bail. All the stuff that happens um, with some conditions and everything. Again, I'm not going to talk about any of that stuff, but it was nice at the time. I was really happy that after like four months of having to deal with all this hate, I guess, and elevating to the stage where I was worried about my own safety properly. Like it was nice to know that she had been arrested. Um, and now that there's actually like fixed law things against her, from like actually directly contacting me. That was nice to know. Now, although she wasn't actually able to contact me directly or get other people to contact me, she was still talking about me. And again, again, this is another one threatening my safety. She tweeted her friend road trip to and the, the place where I live. And then underneath it, sharing a GIF of someone holding a knife. And the, the GIF is stabby, stab, stab. And the, the GIF is the person doing this with a knife. And this is after she'd been arrested, by the way. This is an April of 2022. This is after she'd been arrested, after she'd been put in like, you know, uh, have, having all like the bail agreements. And I want to stress as well that like, I know in the first video I made, I showed like countless, countless, countless screenshots of everything. I, again, I don't want, I cannot be bothered to relive a lot of the stuff now through it. Like I don't want to drag that all up. I want to just stress that what I've shown in this video is like 0.5% of 
everything that was sent. When I say she kept shooting herself on the foot, I'm not exaggerating. Like, because she couldn't keep her mouth shut, it just made everything worse for her. The whole process of this section of my life was incredibly taxing on my mental health. Um, I don't think I realized how much sort of like closed off trauma I had when it came to police and going through the system. As I stated already, um, it was very traumatic to relive a lot of the situation with my um, mother and having to go through the police system with like lots of many things as a child. And it really took a real mental health knock to me and I was my energy was down I even had people messaging me throughout 2022 saying like my videos seem to have like a slightly different vibe that I felt like people were off especially in live shows because I can't edit live shows there are people messaging me constantly being like you know what's what's going on is there something going on behind the scenes because people could sense that there was like an aura change a lot of my friends in my life were also worried about me um contacting me being like just so you know I noticed that you feel a bit down you're very different when I see you I hope you're okay. Just to you know we're here for you. Like it really took a real, real impact on my mental health. And it was so stressful having to go through this process, especially because it started with someone who tried to have me arrested for doing nothing wrong. Even streaming on Twitch, I half the amount of streams that I was doing because I just couldn't deal with it. I was so stressed out. I missed my multiple uploads on YouTube. Like it was really affecting my career because of how much of a mental tax, like how much mentally tax, how mentally taxing it was on my mental health. And I, I just couldn't cope with so much of it that like it was really affecting my income, my job, my, my relationships with my friends, all because she wouldn't stop. It was difficult. It was really, really hard. Now it took about I want to say from like from like the initial police email I had in 2021 to her actually being charged officially and going to court and everything it was about a year maybe like nine months it, it was almost it was about almost a year so I had to go through this for almost a year in and out of like police talks and all this shit and emails and phone calls and conversations and having to go through all this like hateful hateful things that are being said about me and my family and my friends and just constant barragement of like messages and this is what I'm saying she even after being arrested she still never stopped and it did not stop all the way up until the fact that she was like in court now there were discussions about me having to go to court in person if the plead was not guilty but she was officially charged with um stalking with intent to cause harm and had to go in front of a judge and plead guilty on not guilty um from what i know she pled guilty i don't think she pled no contest i think i'm pretty sure she pled guilty a little part of me was like is she really gonna go to the extent to try to see me in person to say not because if she, if she said not guilty i would have had to go to court physically myself and actually see her face to face. Obviously, if you go to court and go through that, the penalty at the end will be harsher than if you just plead guilty or no contest from the beginning. So I did think to myself, like, is she going to risk that? Because there was no way in hell, that if I went to court, there is no way in hell that a jury would have found her innocent. Like, it would have been unbelievable to even comprehend that from the amount of things that were said throughout this whole process that I've shared, you know, I've showed some of it. I'm not going to go through everything. There is far too much to go down. And I just don't want this to be like a screenshot heavy video of just everything because I just cannot be bothered to relive all of that stuff. But I've shown you some. That That is a tiny portion of what went on in this year. And I did think to myself, I was like, is she really going to take it to the next level to actually make me go to court just so she could see me in person? Luckily... It didn't go to that. I would, I was willing to do it, obviously, because I was like, you are not getting away with this. But I'm so glad that it didn't actually have to go to that. I was given a, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go down all of the charge and what actually happened afterwards and the guilty verdicts and all that stuff. But I do have a restraining order against her, which I'm very happy to have. She's, of course, not allowed to come to, a, a, you know, a specific area around me. She's not allowed to talk about me on the internet and, like, you know, message me or directly message me at all and uh, get anyone else to message me on her behalf and all that stuff. This is the first time speaking about this situation since my first video. So it's funny, actually, 
since all of the stuff happened, the amount of messages I have received from people within her own community that she doesn't realize who are actually close to her, even to the state that I even had a family member reach out, rec even recently, just sort of being like, at the time, because of course she, they were on her side because, you know, they were her side people, but actually seeing how she's behaved over the past couple of years have made them realize that I'm actually the okay one is actually quite funny. Of course, I was slandered by her over the internet and she was trying to turn people against me. So it's nice to know that obviously all of my friends who she'd messaged and people that I'd known, like, were on my side and gone, obviously this person's insane. So the fact that it's nice to kind of know that even people on her side have like realized the insanity that was going on and have reached out and been like, just so you know, I'm sorry that you went through all this stuff. It's been, it's been quite nice to be honest it was a lot it was really a lot to deal with um and yeah as i've said multiple times the mental tax it took on me really affected my job my career i was anxious all the time i was nervous i you know having again having to message people about this and making sure that no one's going to find out and you know making sure that, that she doesn't start harassing people and like actually now having to be like do you mind if i post you on the internet or do you mind if I post a photo with you or can we share this or what can I film and I never had to think about all of this stuff before it was really 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 scary and really upsetting again I want to stress as well like a lot of this lot of this time I didn't know who she was I didn't know who what she looked like or you know what she, again she could have been like this 50 year old man she could have been like this scary but like I don't know who she was so like anyone down the street could have been her a lot longer down the line I was able to actually know who this person was properly so it was really Really, it was really scary. I didn't know who she was. At my event that I had in 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 somewhere in the city, it was like, what was I supposed to do? Who were these people? Like, for all I know, someone who was at my meeting greet could have been them. Like, I ha would have had no idea. The whole time I was there, the whole time, honestly, that, that whole event was completely fucking ruined. Even with the security that I had and everything, it was still ruined because I was still on edge. Like, at any point, they could have just turned up and I would have had no idea it was them. And I want to stress as well, like, if you if you maybe didn't watch the first video, I never had any more interaction with her than I would with any of my followers. Like, I wasn't, like, sending her all these, like, extra special DMs being like, I love you and my community. I love you so much. I, like... She was like anyone, she was like any other of my subscribers. You know this for a fact because like, I've never had anyone else do anything like this at all. Like if this was like a repeated thing that I was too friendly with my subscribers, this would have happened over the course of the 15 years way more. But this is the only time it's happened. Like I do not know this woman. I, she was a complete stranger. I didn't really um, expect everything to go down the way that it did, but I'm glad that the final result has happened. Um, so it's been about a year since it all finished. And I am back to myself now. I have been for a little while, but it definitely took a real mental tax, uh, mental, mental tax on me. And it took me a long time to kind of feel myself again and to feel like I didn't need to message new people in my life and to feel like I could actually be sort of free again. Um, but of course, as I said, I do have a restraining order. It's nice to have that there. One thing that I wanted to address quickly, um, because of course, conspiracy theories went a bit wild, girls. Um, and people were saying that they thought Katie was my stalker. I can categorically say that's not the case. I have met her. I know her. I've known her for a while now. Like I know categorically that Katie was never. Fr I knew this. I knew this from way before my video was live. I knew categorically that Katie was not my stalker. But I do want to say um, thank you so much for all the love and support that I did receive throughout the process. Um, it definitely helped. And I know obviously at the time, a lot of you already knew the situation was going on. As I've said, she made herself public. So my video was kind of not so much of like a shock to you, but you were able to sort of understand a bit more what was going on. So you were able to, you know, the things that you were saying to me and stuff were a little bit more uh, helpful as well, because, you know, you were able to understand what situation was going on. So thank you to everyone who was kind of involved at the time as well for all the love and support that you did give me. Having made it as a YouTuber without getting a restraining order against someone, I hopefully never have to go through anything like that again. And I wouldn't wish that on anyone else as well. The idea that she thought she could try to have some kind of charge against me. Like I had police officers watch my video, obviously when all the stuff happened and they were all of them were like this is fine like she can't do anything against you because she's unidentifiable and again she's even less identifiable in this one i guess as well because it's been 
years. As I've said, what I've done isn't illegal. I haven't shared police reports. I haven't shared, but I think I'm pretty sure the police reports would even be like public domain. I think, I'm not sure. Again, I'm not sharing any of that anyway. Again, I wanna stress that what I'm doing isn't illegal. And she will probably watch this. She probably will. But what I'm doing isn't illegal. And as I stated before, any problems that you had with people prior to all the situation happening was your fault. Had absolutely nothing to do with me. And again, I have so much proof to prove your problems you were having with people had nothing to do with me. I have hundreds, hundreds of screenshots and messages prior to my video going live showing you having fights with people and causing problems for yourself regardless of me because you were so public with your outcries, outbursts, as I've sh even shared some of the things here. You were doing everything like this publicly way before my video went up, hence why all of that stuff was in my video because you were doing it for ages before that the idea that you could even say that my video caused you to get hate is ludicrous. Everyone hated you before. You were fighting with people before. And as I said, I am the victim of a crime that you committed against me, that you have been charged and was had penalties for, that I have now been given a restraining order. They don't, the, the, the law system don't just give out restraining orders willy nilly. Like there is a reason I was given a restraining order against you. And as a victim of a crime that you committed against me, I am well within my rights to discuss as a victim something traumatic that happened to me. This is not illegal. And the fact that you thought that you had some kind of case against me is ludicrous. And it was the fact as well, like I remember when I spoke to witness protection at the very end after all finished and everything and you know, I got the restraining order and everything. The day before, all that happened the day before she, I remember, I, I actually don't have the screenshot, but I remember it was something along the lines of like, he's gonna regret what he did to me and I'm gonna get my own back or it was like, I'm gonna get revenge on it. Uh, revenge, it was revenge. She said something about like, I'm gonna get revenge. How can you honestly say that still? It was it was something about a revenge. So I remember speaking to the witness protection. She was like, oh, I guess I'll be talking to you very soon. Then like, we sort of have a little joke, whatever. But like, it was like the fact that you had said that you're gonna get revenge on me. Like the day you literally got like, sentence to the, the oh, I can't I'm stupid anyway with that being said I do want to say thank you for sticking with me I know this video is probably quite long than my normal well actually I guess my, my videos are kind of longer now anyway but thank you for sticking with me if you're still here um thank you for the, all the love and support as I said I know most of you probably don't actually really remember her now because it is a few years but like if you are some of the people that happen to know her or know the situation because you were around in the day don't 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 I beg you do not try to contact her. Do not message her. Do not seek out any, I do not need that. I do not want that. I do not need it. That was never the point of any of this. And again, if you're someone who uh, is new to the situation, do not try to find out who she is. And again, if I find out that anyone has ever tried to contact her, I will instantly block you and you'll be expelled from the community. I do not need a savior. I do not need someone fighting my battles. It is done now, it is over. And this is merely me discussing everything else that happened in the situation to make it a closed case because Obviously, I left all of you with a lot of questions and I didn't answer them. And I kind of invite, obviously I knew I was going to get bombarded with a load of people talk to asking me questions and updates and everything. And now with the recent boost that my video has, my original video has got from the YouTube algorithm, for some reason, again, I don't know why YouTube suddenly decided to push a two year old video, but of course it's opened up a load of new people being like, what happened, what happened, what happened? So I'm making this video case closed. It's finished. It's been done for about a year now. I've moved on. Thank you for watching today's video. It's actually Halloween when I'm filming this. I guess it it makes perfect sense. The spooky thing is all around. It's humans were the scariest of all. Um, it is, uh, yeah, it's currently Halloween. Um, so happy Halloween. Um, this is actually going up a couple days after Halloween, but happy Halloween. Hope, hope you had a wonderful spooky night. Um, oh yes, it's spooky night. It's Halloween so far. I mean, the true spook right now is I'm about to go to the gym to work out my legs. Not fun. But thank you for watching today. Thank you for staying with me. Thank you for the love and support. Thank you for all the uh, lovely messages I received over the, you know, the years that it had happened. And please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos that are coming up. And yes, this video is monetized. I am fully monetizing this situation. If I go through anything so horrific, I will try to make money off it. <laughs>
when this video goes live, it's going to be Patreon change of a day. So I don't know exactly who the ones are for the shout outs. But thank you for everyone who was my Patreon. Make sure you join my Patreon down below. There's lots of little rewards and outtake videos and things. And you get shout outs and videos. And sometimes you get like, uh, you know, uh, outtakes and some direct messages and stuff. So go check out my Patreon down below. Come support, come support the queers. Be fabulous. Be amazing. Be gay. Be everything you want to be. And don't let any bitch out there tell you that you can't be you. Why is that? Because you are flawless.